What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745 and I want to welcome you to All Hail the King episode 81. In this episode we're going to feature Winter Soldier and some magnetized team ups. They all are honestly extremely good, they really are. I didn't have any problem winning all of my matches with each team. So make sure you stay tuned, watch them all, and then you can decide which one you like the best. But before we begin, I do want to mention you should check out the From the Helicarrier podcast and I'll place a link in the description below. Now for the first match, we've seen this team already. Also, the footage was slightly cut off and we fixed that problem since. However, it's such a good match that I actually had it as a Battle of the Week candidate and ultimately, I decided it fit perfect in this episode. So anyways, of course it's going to be Winter Soldier and Magneto, my primary attackers for a portion of this PvP season. They really don't have too many issues beating anyone. But let's give them a true test against a worthy team featuring Kurth and Null. The agent's taken a pretty quick early hit, and that's really good because they do have the Dark Energy Blade. And we keep saying how that can be a really big pain against anyone, especially Winter Soldier. So the sooner we can take them out, the better. Also, they have the Lunacy, which is very annoying. After this point, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because Nall is going to protect. But we'll give our team a shield. And then go for our big hit. That's going to be our level 2. By the way, as we target him, notice he has the Mystic Shroud, but he still has that Magnetized Chemical Mine. I have to admit, that's pretty awesome. And of course, he does take the hit, but now he's around 50% health as well. Following Kurth's Fear Me, we're going to try to use the Blackest Void, and we get stopped with Mind Control. Now that's what we get for experimenting and taking the Techno-Organic Endoskeleton off our bar. So we quickly learned, do not remove that. Certainly not in this season of the Dark Energy Blade. Its Reign of Tyranny is already legendary. In fact, he's going to go ahead and get a double attack on Winter Soldier, then he tries to reflect the counter. Fortunately, we'll still hit him. So that's at least one thing that it typically will fail at. After that, we're going to try to use our Blast Mine, and of course, we're hit with Mind Control. This just makes us want to kill him that much more. Next, on the enemy Kurth's turn, he's going to hit Winter Soldier, and then another Reflect tries to stop our counter. Unfortunately, it misses anyways, but they broke our shield and gave us an extra turn. So with that, we'll use a Revolutionary Strike, and it does land on their agent. He's really close to being knocked out at this point. So after using Momentary Advantage, we'll go with the Graviton Well, and it does finish him off. So now we know we can place those mines. Kara will stop our next hit. And if you're wondering how we got so many turns, it's because our shield was broken. At the end of all this, Nala is very close to being knocked out, but Kurth is still at full health. Even worse though, we're now missing Magneto. And Kurth can pretty much one-shot anyone she wants. So this match isn't exactly won. What we're going to do is hire Colleen Wing to attack Kurth, and she'll do a very nice amount of damage. Plus we get an aim shot follow-up. Following that, we're going to use our Smothering Shadow and play some Dots. That's a free action and a quick action, but we still get a regular action. And with that, we'll use the Light Fantastic. And then Winter Soldier is going to be up next. What we're going to do with him, after a little bit of debate, because we could use that level 9 to finish off Null. Instead, we're going to go ahead and throw our Blast Mine. So here it goes. And it's also going to explode, first for 140k, then Kurth goes down to dots. So that's a very big finish, and I definitely wanted to put that in this episode. As for our second team, it may actually be my favorite, and I might have to replace Magneto. I guess I tried to get away from May, but she's still just incredible, especially with Winter Soldier. Here we're facing a very high health Kurth and Colossus team. May's going to start it out, and right away she kind of lets their entire team have it. But they haven't seen anything yet. With my agent, we'll of course use the Smothering Shadow, 
And that's always for those dots. So yeah, we may not want to attack with melee against an elite E-ISO wearing agent, but we can always cause them some damage over time. Then May procs another turn, and with that, she does around 30k damage to their agent, knocking her out already. That's a melee attack I'm willing to unleash. Unfortunately, Kurth will get off of Fear Me, but on Winter Soldier's first turn, we're going right for a magnetized blast mine. We're skipping the setup, and it still does very nice damage. Then with May up once again, we're going to go ahead and use her repelled uppercut, and that does a decent amount of damage to Colossus. However, unfortunately, her hits are weakened right now. Either way, though, this team is pretty much done for. And that's against a supposed tank-type team. May and Bucky made very quick work of them. Following our agent's light fantastic, Kurth's almost dead from dots, she misses Winter Soldier. And then on his turn, we'll just go ahead and fire an aim shot. Then let May finish her off. With her magnetic maneuver, she comes just short, but after using primed and ready, we're going to recharge, proc another turn, and end it with an uppercut. So all in all, that team, like I said, is probably my favorite. But after this final match, let me know what your favorite team is. Just post that in the comment section below. For our final team up, we're going to use Victor Mancha. The only issue is they're both infiltrators but they're two of the best. We're facing a pretty annoying Union Jack and Spider-Man Noir team. Fortunately, we of course using the Techno-Organic Endoskeleton, and with the Blackest Void, we'll remove their Warding Essence. Then our Mind Control stops their turn. So take that. You know what, Union Jack's gonna be very annoying without a doubt, but at least we will get some Reflect damage and some Absorb Energy going off. So he may be attacking our agent, but he's actually going to be making us much stronger. That's definitely going to help us out against all these follow-up attacks. Plus, we're going to end up with an extra turn. We don't really have a ton that we want to do, so we'll just use the Smothering Shadow. And then, we're pretty much going to pass our turn. My whole thing is, I don't try to do too much with my agent. We'll take what they give us, and we just keep him there as an insurance policy. Now I do feel like with the enemy agent having the Dark Energy Blade on Winter Soldier's turn, I'm not sure if he's going to get a mine down. So instead, I think I'm actually going to start with our level 1. I'll also usually do this if they have the Mystic Shroud or Warding Essence, even though like I showed, you can still put that mine down. As far as a level 1, it does seem like it gets through more often, but it's still going to get stopped. So I guess we should have went for the mines. Still, like I said, this usually just strengthens our resolve to take down that agent first. And Victor, I think, is up for the job. So on his turn, we're going to use Quick Reflexes. Then we'll go with his level 2. This applies Magnetized Downgrade, Static Charge, and Radiation Exposure because of the Ionizing A-ISO. The damage will definitely add up. First of all, you get the initial hit, the Static Charge, then they're going to be taking radiation exposure as well. This puts Union Jack down to 10k, and he gets preemptively countered, plus triggering another static charge on their team. This means Union Jack is very close to being knocked out, and he's going to do a melee attack on our agent. Plus, because of his follow-up, he gets hit with Reflect, and Absorb Energy should finish him off. Alright, so this looks kind of odd. But there he goes, so we're not complaining. Next, on my agent's turn, we're going to go ahead and use the Alluring Light for a heal and a shield. Then we'll try the Dark Energy Blade on Spidey Noir. Will we actually hit him? I don't know. Well, he's going to get Danger Sense, so we won't. Plus, we're going to take a Mandible. But that actually takes more health away from him than it does us. So, I'm not too upset about that exchange. Now on Winter Soldier's next turn, we are going to throw the Chemical Mine, and it gets through. It's going to go off right away. So there goes some damage, and of course debuffs. Then on Victor Monch's turn, we'll finish off the enemy agent. 
With him gone, I'm pretty sure you know we're going to end this match with Winter Soldier as long as Spidey Noir lives. We will use the improbability field for more debuffs. And then, Noir is going to miss his turn, but he's still alive with 4700 HP. So with this final explosion, we're going to end the video. And it does 100,000 damage. So pretty nice way to go out. But that is going to be it, so I want to thank you all for watching, ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. Then until next time, good luck, and take care.